Okay, so in this example, we're going to cover a previous problem. Uh, if you have not seen the other video with example number two, with the elevator and the flip-flops, please go do so. Uh, in this one, we're going to cover some of the steps that will um, allow us to, to design the FSM with a JK flip-flop instead of a D flip-flop. So it's the same problem as before. We have to simulate a fried elevator for two floors. The inputs are the same, the outputs are the same, the details are the same. So we have the same problem. Now we are only going to look at the step number five and step number six, okay? Um, the steps one through four will be exactly, exactly the same as before. Uh, the general look the general uh, structure of the FSM will be the same except that the flip-flops in the middle are going to be JK. We do need a, the state assign table so uh, in this problem I'm just I just copied from the last from the last steps we have the state assign table which tells us what it tells us the next step the next state uh, for any for any input combination for a given input combination okay we're going to ignore the columns on the right which are the outputs we don't we don't need it we don't need them it's going to be the same as before but for this example we don't need them so now we know also that we need two flip-flops right and we we need to decide what flip flop, which I already told you, we're gonna use <laughs> we're gonna use JK, and and we need to decide what I have to put in my input here, so that I get the the correct the correct Q. So we're gonna use the JK flip flop, and I want you to remember how this one works, right? The JK flip flop, whenever you clock it. If you put a zero zero at the inputs, there is no change at the output. So whatever you had before, it stays the same. So if you had a zero, it stays the same. Now, whenever you clock it and you have a zero one, whatever uh, output you had, whether it was a zero or a one, now the output is going to be forced to be a zero. If you put a one and a zero, it was going to be forced to be a one. If you put a one and a one, that means a one here and a one here, and I clock it, right? What's gonna happen to my output is going to be inverted. So Q prime, Q prime means Q naught, right? So Q naught, okay? This is Q plus, which is the next one. Whatever, if it's only Q, it means the current one. Uh, so, Especially if it's a QT, that means current. Q, Q plus is, that's an ugly plus. Q plus means the next one. So we're gonna toggle it. Remember that we use the term toggle, toggle. So that's what we're doing. So now we decide, we, we have a JK flip flow. We need to determine what do I need to put in here? What values do I need to put in here? so that I get the Q that I need, okay? So that's what we're thinking. So now for that, we need a transition table, okay? We're going to ignore the clock. We're going to ignore the clock column. We can also ignore this, this row. We don't need about this one since we I eliminated the clock. Just gonna look at these whenever you clock it. And that's, that's we're assuming that whenever I clock it, I, it this is happening. So a transition tel, tel, table will tell us that if I have a Q and my next Q, I want it to be something else. What do I need to put in my J and what do I need to put in my K input? So that's what we need to think about. So now, what are the possible combinations? Possible combination is I, I, I have a zero in my Q and I also need a zero in the Q plus, a zero and a one, a one and a zero, or a one and a one. Okay, and these are the possible 
uh, transitions, right? I, I have a zero and I want to have a one in the next one. So let's just look at the first example. If I want to go from a zero to a zero and I look at my characteristic table, okay, I'm going to look at the characteristic table. I want to, it got, it got back the white that I had put when I put the eraser, it got back, it went back to the original one. So I want to go from a zero to a zero. So my Q plus, I'm looking at this one because I, I want to force it to be a zero. That's one case that I could do. I could force it. The other option that I have is that I use a zero and zero because that means that it's, it's not changing, which is this case, right? I'm going from a zero to a zero. It's not changing. So these are my two options that I kept putting my J and the K. Now you can see what is common to these two rows. I have J is a zero. So for sure, I have to put J as zero. And then what happens with the K? Does it have to be a zero? Does it have to be a one? Right? It doesn't really matter what 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 we put, so we can put that as a D. So no matter what we put there, we're gonna have that transi transition scene. Now, if I wanna go from, I'm gonna look at this one now. But this one is done. So if I wanna go from a zero to a one, what, which one of these rows could be helpful? So first, I can force it to be a one. Right, I can force the output to be a one, or I can toggle the, the 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 output. Right, this means that's equal to toggle. Uh, if I had a zero, it's going to become a one. If I had a one, it's going to become a zero. That's what the toggling means. So I can use this one to have this transition. That means that I have to force J to be a one and K. I don't really care what I put in there. So same thing with the next. Okay, so now let's do the next one. Uh, have this one is done, and so we're going now. We're going from a one to a zero. You guys remember this from a previous class or previous video? Uh, yeah, from actually another course or a previous video, another video, uh, another class. Yeah, have you seen this transition tab table? Let me know. If you have or you have not. Now, from one to zero, we want to force it to be a zero. So we look at this one. Or we want to toggle it. So we also look at this one. In this case, just cover with your hand for a minute this row. What does these two columns have? Uh, in the case of the J, is there something col common? Or in the case of the K, something common? So the K is what is common? K is one here and one here. So for sure, I have to put that as a one. And then if you look at the K, whether it's a zero, whether it's a one, we, it doesn't matter. So we can put that, actually that's a D, sorry, D. It doesn't matter. So you get the idea, right? So you're gonna pause and you're gonna uh, think about the next row. You can even pause, pause in the previous one, just so you can do it. This is something that you don't need to memorize. I do not memorize never. I never memorize this transition table. I uh, usually, whenever I'm working on a FSM design for an, an example, I I just go and do exactly like I'm doing right now and I derive it again. So if you understand this, you will never have to uh, memorize anything. So last one, last step. Now, again, we need to force it to be a one or we need to make it no change, right? Because no change, we're going from a one to a one. So this guy and this guy, that will be a what? I'm sorry, chose the wrong row, this one. So a zero and zero. So that means a zero here. And then this is a one, this is a zero. So that means it doesn't even matter what we put there as long as the K is a zero. So, so this is how we come up with that transition table that we will be using. So how did this help us, right? Because I had mentioned in the previous slide that I want to be able to say if I want a queue, 
right? If I want a queue that is something, especially now we're going to look at transitions. I want a queue that is something. What do I need to put in my J? Why do I need to put in my K? Okay, so we're going to be looking for these kind of things in the, in the next table. Uh, we're going to have to look at the Q columns and versus the Q plus columns. And we're going to determine what will be the J, what will be the K. Let's just do it. See, and I copied the transition table. So this is the transition table right here on the left. On the top left, we have the transition table. And what Q, what, what would be Q, what would be Q plus? It would depend on uh, if you're looking at flip-flop one or flip-flop zero. It would also depend if you're looking at uh, which of these columns, the UD00, zero, zero, the zero, 01, actually these, let me correct this one. So I have zero, 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 01, one, 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 zero, and 11. One, one. Okay, so now we need to kind of ignore uh, for a moment. Uh, if you have these in a hard copy, it's always good to have like a a ruler or a paper that you can cover certain parts parts of your table because if you have a, a large table, a big table, it will be difficult to cover everything and to have all the zeros and ones. So blank paper uh, to cover some parts of your table is useful. We're also going to ignore the Q0 for a moment. We're going to look only at the Q1. And so you can see that in our first case, and we're actually, I'm actually looking at the state assigned table, right? Remember we said we need it? So that's where we're looking right here on the right. That's the state assigned table. We ignored everything except for that, those two columns. Now, for going from a transition from a zero to a zero, we don't have to think about it every time. That's why we, we write this one beforehand. So from zero to zero, and to put a zero D. Why did I put it here, guys? Why don't I put it here in this part? Because we're looking at flip-flop number one, remember? So zero D. Now from a zero to a zero, that's a zero D. From a one to a one, and remember it's one and one again, so D zero and D zero, okay. So now we're going to look at the next column, this one. Now we're going to focus on flip-flop zero. And again, we're going to look at transition from a zero to a zero. That's A, zero, D. From a one to a zero, it's this guy, D, one. And then zero to zero, this guy, zero, D. And then one to zero, uh, that's a D1. Okay. So that's the idea. If you want to pause it right now and you want to fill your table by yourself, do the exercise by yourself, you can come and compare with my final table. What I will say right now is that you can also look at the big picture of the table and find things that are similar. Why do I mean by that? So here we went from zero zeros to zero zeros, right? And we got these values. Is there anywhere else in the table that that's a case that occurs? For example, that is this case also, right? So we're going from a zero zero to a zero zero, right? So that's that one. So I can say a zero D. 0, D. Where else? So what else do we got? We got, for example, we already have the values from going from a 1, 0 to 1, 0. Is there any other way that that happens? Yes, actually, in that same row, we have from 1, 0 to 1, 0. That will be D, 0, 0, D. Okay, so you can look at the big picture. You can also look at by, look at it by by columns. So, for example, if I am going here, for example, 
I'm going from a from a one to a one, which is this one. That's D zero. So whenever I see that, that's a D zero. And what else do I see that? I see that one happening from here to here, which is what? Remember, this is this this column, which is this column. Yeah, let me let me put some correction. One one zero and one one. So that would be flip flip flop zero, and that's going to be U D zero one. Okay, so it's going to be on this side. So that's going to be D zero, right? Where else? So also you can see a bunch of transitions from one ones to one ones to one 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 ones, <laughs> from one one to one one, or you can think of this as being from a one to a one, from a one to a one, and so on. Again, from a one to a one, and from a one to a one. So all of those transitions, and they're actually way over here on the right. So these two numbers is this, these two numbers is this, and that's all going to be these zeros. So I'm going to put, um, D zero, D zero, D zero, D zero. Okay, so I only got this one left, right? Only got this transition, which was a one zero, so D one. And I already got the bottom row. Um, you can find similar like that. So, for example, another example would be having one to one and that's going to be i think this one that will be a d0 also so there's many many different ways that you can do um, sometimes one way is easier than others sometimes just sticking to the uh, methodical way of going by column that works methodical way of going by row that also works uh, looking at the big picture also works in some of the cases okay so you can pause it and you can uh, fill it out by yourself and compare with my final answer okay once we have these we need to transform these into a truth table that we can uh, modify so now remember i had said that the state assign the assignments you can do in different ways Whenever you do not assign in this order of 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, you have to be paying attention whenever you do the true tables because that means that if you do a different order of these, some of these uh, rows will have to be changed in the next step, in this step basically. Uh, whenever you're matching the red the blue and the, the yellow and the and the orange to your truth table. Anyway, so I think this is, uh, you're more familiar with this. The whole goal here is that we need to have as input, let me correct this one, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. We need to have as the inputs, we need U, D, Q1, and Q0. And remember that I said that use in this order. So it will become easier so that way we can if we follow that pattern zero 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 one one zero one one we follow that pattern we will have something like this we have a zero d zero d zero d d one d zero zero d d zero d one and so on okay so that's what we're doing now you can go do the red one first or do the blue one or all the by column okay so once you have that uh you can use k maps you can use multiplexers you can use encoders decoders any type of circuit block or any type of um, basically design uh, 
any way that you can design a combinational circuit, you can you can do it. So finish up the table, pause the video, finish up, and come back and look at it. This is the final answer. And one way you could do is use multiplexers. Another way you can do is uh, regular K maps. And I will give you the final answer for that, and you can double check with my answer. In the case of multiplexers, this is what I this is why I, I'm using a what what is four to one multiplexer, so four to one mux multiplexer. Uh, this case we have Q1 right here, uh, and the rest are either ones and zeros. Can see the connections. If you see the connections, and you end up with the same thing. Uh, we have U and D, U and D as selectors for for these. In the next slide, in this slide, actually have the the formula. So if you come up with the formulas, you can double check here. Okay. So that's how we do with the JK flip flops. So I wanted to mention that the JK flip-flops, it's harder to, to do the flip-flop input table, but at the end, you end up with a simple, simpler, simple, simpler equations that you will end up with the D flip-flop. So the D flip-flop, this will be longer. For example, if you remember the D, D1 was equal to something, something, or something. It had four different terms. If you go look at the other vid video, in this case, you can see that J has one term, K has one term, J0 has two, K has one term. So it depends how you plan to do it. If you plan on building, I would. In my, I, my experience or my uh, preference, I will probably use JK flip-flops. If you're designing, maybe if you're only designing a uh, simulation, maybe it's easier uh, with the D flip-flops. So it's up to you. Those are my, the, those are the pros and cons of the J flip-flops, JK flip-flop versus the D flip-flop. That's all I have for this video. And... If you have questions, let me know.